Okay, welcome back to another wonderful day of your online geometry course. Uh, this is going to be the last section before you take a quiz. Um, so if you have any questions, make sure you reach out to me and we'll go over it on the next synchronized day. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is 1.4, as I said, and that is um, angles. angles. Well, that is very dark, so let me go ahead and try to fix that. So I shall put you at one, and we are good. Okay, so we've already talked about uh, line segments. We've talked about lines. We've talked about planes. We talked about how important it is to have uh, good descriptions slash definitions of these terms. So what we are doing now is we're just moving on to one other term and that is of a geomet uh, geometric object and that is of an angle. Okay? So we know that we started out with points and points were basically the element that we made lines out of in line segments. So now what we're going to do is a picture and try to figure out what is a way or how could we go over and describe an angle. So we get an A there here C there okay so how could we talk about this object using the terms we already came up with can we use a line segment can we use a line kind of seems like two lines coming together but lines go in opposite directions forever this is strange well think about this if we had this object right here get above it and it was going in that direction and then you add another one over here and going in that direction. What are those objects? Well, they are two rays with a common what? Common point, just point? No, a common end point. And Okay, so we're talking about an angle and we're talking about uh, as the two objects that come together to make it. Two rays with a common endpoint. Okay, so let's say we had this one up here, an A there, a B there, and a C there. Let's say we had a D over here. One way to name this angle would be you say angle, you actually write the word, and then you take one point on one ray, then this thing right here is called the vertex. Okay. The vertex and then over here you would take another point so on one side we have an a then we have the vertex of a b and then we go over and have on the other one a c so one possible way of doing this is calling it angle a b okay another way we could do this is we could write out angle start on the other side c B, A. What do we know? We know that this middle point right here is uh, talking about the vertex. Okay? So that is not the same thing as B, A, C. Okay? So one way is writing the word and then having three points. Another way of doing this is by using an angle marker, which kind of looks like a less than symbol, and then you say A, B, C. Another one would be angle A, B. Give me a point on the other one. It would be D. Okay? So, those are some examples. Another way we could do it, sometimes they have a number in here, and it's not talking about the number of degrees, not talking about the measure of it. So then you can go over and call it angle 1. Okay? Now, occasionally what you can do is you can call it angle and then you just use the vertex b when can you do that and when can you not do that you can do that if there is no possible way someone could confuse what angle you're talking about right here angle b is this but if i went over and i did that and this was a b c and d if i said angle b how many possible angle B's are there? One, two, and the whole thing, three. 
So there's three possible angle Bs here. So no, I cannot use a single point. I have to use three. But if there was no way to confuse what angle we're talking about, you could just call it angle B. Okay, so that's what we need to know about angles and about notation. So let's jump into the next part, which is the measure of the angle. Once again, mathematicians, crazy, lazy, and efficient. Uh, they try to figure out, well, what can you do? Well, we could write the words measure of the angle. That's a lot of words. Don't really want to do that. Hmm. What letter can we use to represent the fact that we're talking about measure? How about an M? Okay. So the measure of the angle is just going to be, let's first write our description. It is going to be the span of the angle. We're going to usually be talking about uh, angles in degrees, but there's something called a radian as well that you will be getting into next year in Algebra 2. The span of the angle. Okay, so this is what they do. If we were talking about an angle, and this was 50 degrees, they're not saying the angle name is 50, and this was A, B, C, we could go over and say the measure of angle A, B, C equals, and then we just tell how many degrees, 50 degrees. On this one over here, could is there any other possible angle other than that angle for angle B? Nope. So we could say measure of angle B equals 50 degrees. Okay. So that's how we talk about uh, the measure of the angle. And once again, uh, this year we're going to be using degrees, and next year we are going to be using an Algebra 2 radians. Okay, let's keep on cranking. So when we take a look at this, um, it says name all the angles. Well, if I wanted to talk about this angle right here, could I call it just angle G? The answer is no, because there's too many angle Gs. So here would be one angle. And that would be angle F, G, J. Here's another possible one. That's angle J, G, H. And the last one is angle F, G, H. So those are the three angles. One, two, and then the third. This one right here, no thank you. Uh, we're going to skip this. Okay. Um, the reason we're going to skip this is because there's so many possible angles. One, two three, four, five, and then the straight angle, six. There's just so many angles, and I think you guys get the point here. Um, all right, let's go ahead and do more of these problems below and come up with these different terms. So acute angle. I know you guys have talked about acute angles in different math classes. How many degrees for something to be acute? Well, it's got to be greater than zero because it has to be an angle and it has to be less than what number? 90 degrees. Remember, I'm sure your teacher said, it's cute. Oh, how cute. It's so small. So an acute angle between zero and 90 degrees is acute. A right angle, a right angle is going to be 90 degrees. Okay. Now there is a notation. Once again, it's very hard to draw an actual 90 degree. Is that 90 degrees? Uh, I don't know. I don't feel like measuring it. If you go over and put a little box in there, that means it is exactly 90 degrees. The box means 90. And you'll see that with triangles as well. Obtuse is going to be greater than 90, but less than 180. A straight angle is just how many degrees? 180. What's a different name for a straight angle? What is this? A line. Okay. Beautiful. Now, one other thing we have to talk about is congruent angles. Those are angles with the same measure. Okay. Congruent still is that symbol right there, and it's still talking about the objects themselves, not their measure. So if we wanted to talk about congruent angles, let me go ahead and show you an example. Let's say we had this angle and then this thing was splitting it in half. So therefore, this one is congruent to this one right over here. Call that A, B, C, and D. So how we would write this is angle ABC is congruent to angle CBD. That's 
the congruent symbol. Now you may have noticed what I did here. What that is, is do you remember when we were talking about if you had like a line segment, another line segment, and you wanted to say they're congruent, you just do one tick, one tick, and then you could move to two ticks, two ticks, and so on? What we do uh, with angles is you put a little arc, and then you go over and do an arc, or a double arc, double arc, and so on. And then you can go to triple arc, triple arc, depending on how many angles you're trying to say are congruent. Sometimes they also do this, though. I'll just put it up here. If you want to say these angles were congruent, some people go over and put a line, like a tick mark, inside of that, and then they would do a double tick. Okay, So that's how we talk about the actual angles being congruent. And the symbol that we use, instead of uh, tick marks, another way of doing it is one arc, one arc, two arcs, two arcs, three arcs, three arcs, and so on. All right, let's keep cranking along. Identify the congruent angles. So let's take a look here. Angle, oops, got to press pencil first. Okay, on this one right here, angle L, there's only one possible thing that we could be talking about for angle L, is congruent to angle what? Angle M. Next, angle P is going to be congruent to, what is it? Angle N. Okay. Now on this one right here, it says the diagram below, KM bisects. What do you think bisects means? Cuts it into two congruent angles. Okay, so this is an angle bisector, which means that's congruent to that. It says LKN. L, K, N, meaning the whole entire angle, is going to be 78. Uh, measure of L, K, N, uh, la, 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 let's see, sorry. Um, L, K, N, and uh, this. Oops, messed that up. They said L, K, N. Uh, by six LKN, cool, but then it says LKM, LKM is right here. That's 78 degrees. Well, what else could I write in here? Well, that's got to be 78 degrees as well because those are congruent. So the whole entire thing is going to be 156 if my math is right. Okay, so this is basically saying if that is congruent to that and this one's 78, then we can write that 78 as well. Okay. Over here, it looks like we skipped this. If P is 120, if P is 120, then N is what? 120. If L is 20, then what is M? 20. Okay. All right, so that's just dealing with notation and talking about when you need to have three points and when you don't. Time to switch the page. Okay, and boom, and options. Okay, we are back in business. Okay. Identify pairs of congruent angles. I think we've kind of beat this uh, down to a bloody pulp. Uh, we don't need to do more of these. Obviously, that's saying it's congruent to that. Would we need to have three points? Or would we need to have just one point when we're talking about the angle? Well, there's multiple possible angle Ks, so we would go over and have to have three points that we're talking about. Because I see one, two, and the whole thing, three possible angle Ks. So let's take a look at this. Finding the measure of an angle. Now, you guys should have bought um, something called a protractor. Okay? Now, a protractor is the thing that looks like a little rainbow. Hopefully you guys have one. Unfortunately, I can't bring one up on here. But how a protractor works, you would see a line, some of them start here and go out to zero somewhere there, or some of them are zero right here. So let me go ahead and try to, one more time, I want to make this a little bit. Two, 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 okay, one, cool. Sorry about that. I just don't want it to be so bold. Okay, so on here, right, if you wanted to measure this angle, most of the uh, Protractors can be measured this direction or this direction. It does not matter, but you got to be careful because what that means is that each measure has an obtuse and an acute. So this would be like, oh, this is 120 or it is 60. And you have to ask, is it acute or is it obtuse? So if you have a 
protractor. Pre please set it on here like this. Something like that. Okay, and make sure this lines up right here, lines up with um, this one. Let's see if I can do, yeah. Make sure over here lines up with the zero. Now it's gonna go out, and I'm assuming this looks like 60 degrees-ish, but I don't have a protractor right now. So this one would say 60, 120. It depends on which way you're measuring it from. Well, since this is acute, which one of it, which is it going to be? 60. Once again, if you have a protractor, you're able to actually measure it. I'm not, so maybe this is more than 60. But go ahead and measure it and see what that would be. On this one, set your protractor on it. Oh, this isn't all that pretty. Let's say this was the center right here. Sorry, that's supposed to be equally spaced. Anyways, you would go over and see what the angle was that was right here. It should give you an obtuse angle. I'm guessing here. Maybe that would be like 30 degrees or 50 degrees would be your options, something like that. If those were your two options on your protractor, which one would it be? It would be 130 degrees. 130 degrees because it is obtuse. But once again, you have to use your protractor. Just make sure that one of the rays is going to zero and then you see where the other one goes to. Be careful because almost all protractors can be read from either side and it's easy to mess those up. What I would really like you guys to do is be able to guesstimate uh, an angle. We all know that this is 90 degrees. So you should know half of that. That looks like half of 90, which is 45. So just know that this is about 45. I thought that that was slightly more than that. Maybe it wasn't. But if that's 45, this one's probably actually closer to 50 or something. You basically can think of increments of 45. 45, 90, and then 90 plus 45, which is 135. And that will allow you to guesstimate looking at this. Well, I know this is more than 90, less than 180. It's almost in half, uh, splitting through the middle here. And I want you guys to be able to guesstimate your angles. So let's keep on cranking. The angle addition postulate. If the segment addition postulate said part of a segment plus another part of the segment equals the whole, what do you think the angle addition postulate says? It says part plus part equals whole. So let's just do this. Part plus part. So if you had something like this, this little angle plus that angle equals the whole angle, right? That's all it's saying. So sometimes you're going to be adding two pieces together and getting the whole. For example, here, it says, given the measure of GFJ is 150. GFJ, so I'm going to note this whole entire thing is 155, okay? Find the measure of GFH, um, okay, we got a problem here. That is supposed to be over here. It just bumped over accidentally. So what we are trying to do is figure out what the angle measures are. I'm going to let us be a little bit lazy. Let's just solve for x. x equals question mark. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, those look like they're congruent, so let's just set them equal to one another. Do you see congruent marks here? Since you don't see congruent marks, you can't assume. Never assume in geometry, okay? So since it doesn't say that they're congruent, we don't know they are, but we do know this part and this part make the whole thing. So we do know that 4x minus 1 plus 4x plus 4 equals 155, which is 8x and then plus 3 equals 155. Subtract 3, subtract 3, you get 8x equals 152. Divide by 8 and divide by 8. Okay. Let's make sure I did all that right. 8, and that gives me 3. And subtract 3, yep. Okay. Now that's how I'm going to leave it because I don't have my calculator on me but you guys can go over and put that in your calculator and see if it comes out to something nice. Now take a look at this one. We have a part plus a part, but we don't know what the whole is. 
So it seems like we just can't do the problem. I want to set them equal to one another, but I can't because we know they're not congruent. Hmm. Part plus part equals whole, but we have the parts, we just don't know the whole. Uh, what's this thing mean again? That means that it is 90 degrees, which means that we can add x minus 4 plus 3x plus 2 and set it equal to 90 degrees. 4x minus 2 equals 90. 4x equals 92. We divide by 4. I'm going to leave it like that because I don't have my calculator right now, but if you don't mind going over and figuring out what that was, once we figured out that, since this is not just asking for x, you should really substitute it in there to find out what x is. All right. Let's go ahead and... Come on. Okay. Um, sorry. Uh, let's go ahead and continue on. Wrap this up. Okay. Okay, we're almost done. Um, let's try this. Options. Okay. All right. So let's just do some word problems here and then go from there. More examples. A, B, C is a straight angle point. Uh, D is on the interior of A. If measure of A, B, D is 3x, uh, I, don't, I can't even keep writing this. I think our first step should probably be to go ahead and draw it. So let's go ahead and draw it. It says that options, sorry, I just, it, every time I go to a new page, it resets to a very thick pen, which is not fun to write in. Okay, here we go. It says A, B, C is a straight angle. A, B, C is a straight angle. D is on the interior. We don't know where, so I'm not putting it perfectly in the middle because I'd be more specific than what they told us. They say ABD, ABD is 3x minus 7, and they tell us that DBC is 2x plus 2. Well, I can't set them equal to one another because I don't know that they are congruent angles, and we have a part and a part, but we don't know the whole. The whole is, since it's a straight angle, the whole is how many degrees? 180. 3x minus 7 plus 2x plus 2 equals 180. So you end up with 5x minus 5 equals 180. 5x equals, you would add 5 and add 5, 185. Divide by 5, divide by 5. Once again, I don't have a calculator right now. I haven't gotten my calculator from work yet. So you would figure out what that is. Uh, let's see, 37, I believe. Please, 37. Yeah, that goes into that three times with three left over. 37. The only thing is, is since it is asking how many degrees, technically we're supposed to substitute that into there. 2 times 37 plus 2. So 2 times 37 plus 2, that is 74, 75, 76, 76 degrees. Therefore, the other one, so that they add up to be 180, is going to be 104, if I did my math right. You guys are the one with the calculators. Check my work. Okay. Um, 74, 76, yeah, that looks right. All right, let's wrap this baby up. <clears throat> Okay, I think I am going to finish on this problem right here, and then we may talk about that problem when we talk in person. It says CBH is bisected by that. What's the first step in geometry? Step one is draw it out. CBH is bisected by BK. Now, since I know that they are congruent, I should really put these in so that I know that they're congruent because I didn't really draw it perfect. CBK is 8x minus 2, and uh, KBH is 6x plus 22. Hmm. 
Well, first I want to solve for x. Is this a part plus part equals whole? Do we know what the whole is? Or is it two congruent things where we know we can set them equal? Well, an angle bisector cuts an angle into two congruent angles. So that must mean that this is congruent to that. When you have congruence, you can set their measures equal. So we do know 8x minus 2 equals 6x plus 22. Minus 6x minus 6x is 2x plus 2 plus 2 is 24. x equals 12. And then technically it says, what is CBH? CBH is the whole entire thing. So let's figure out what, what let's substitute that into here. 6 times 12 plus 22. And that gives us 60, 72 plus 22. 74, 94 degrees. And then you would have to double it. Now, 188. What's the problem? It's over 180 degrees. It's just a little funky. It's because I made this problem out of my head and I didn't work it out before printing it. So 188 degrees, yeah, that's more than 180 degrees. I just messed up when I was making the problem. But this is the correct method. All right, so the main things you need to remember are uh, if there is no possible other angle that you're talking about, you can use just the vertex when you're talking about it. If there's a possible way of confusing it, you should use three points. If you say angle ABC, that is saying that B is your vertex. That point is on one of the rays, that point is on the other, and that one is the vertex. If you put an M in front, it is talking about the measure of it. And just like we have the segment addition postulate that says part of the segment plus another part equals the whole, we have the same exact thing when we're talking about angles. We also, just like we have a midpoint on a line segment, you have something that splits an angle in two, which is an angle bisector. All right, thanks a bunch for watching.